Welcome, welcome, one and all. Winter Wizard here, and in this video, I'm going to be divulging more secrets of how to paint the color scheme for my Death Guard army, the Drowned Plague. Welcome to part two of Painting the Drowned Plague, the seven part painting series where I hone in on all the different aspects of painting the deep sea nautical colour scheme for my Death Guard army and I show you how it's done. So we've got a model here, this is Gut Rut Spume, uh, Age of Sigmar model strictly, but um, there's such great variety on this model, all these lovely different parts, uh, it really gives me an opportunity to show you all the different aspects of, uh, of my colour scheme in one model and if you follow all the videos till, till the end then you, you'll see a completely finished model by the end of it or if you just want to hone in on one or two well, that's perfectly fine as well so in episode one we looked at the drowned power armor so that's already done there uh, in this episode we're going to be looking at the rusted corroded uh, verdigris ridden metallics so we're going to be focusing in on all these ornate pieces this bit on the top there little chest piece there, another little bit of decorative stuff there and there's a, there's a fly on his gauntlet there uh, and of course we've got the big, the big chopper there as well so all those bits, oh and the chainmail around here too, all those bits brass, silver, we're gonna paint them in, corrode them up we've got some lovely texture paints to use um, make them really nice and rusty, that's a big part of the uh, the colour scheme of mine I wanted to create something, um, lots of rust, lots of corrosion give it a really sort of, like it's been sitting at the bottom of the ocean feel so we're going to get started here very shortly it's, uh, it's morning here in Winter Wizard's Frozen Fortress um, it's cold and lonely but I've got a cup of coffee and um, Dimu here, my traditional Norwegian troll keeping an eye on things for me so I'm going to show you what paints we need. We're going to need Balthazar Gold. This is going to be for the ornate pieces of metallic. So um, on his shoulder pad here, uh, the horn on his face, uh, these little trio of plates there, and the fly emblem on his gauntlet as well. All the ornate stuff. Balthazar Gold. And then we're going to need Lead Belcher. This is going to be for the, for the axe, the chain mail, the rings and the hooks and all those, all those metal bits there. I'm going to wash both of those with Agrax Earthshade, of course. Um, but then the Magic Pot, this is Typhus Corrosion Technical Paint, and this is going to create that crusty, corroded effect. Um, a fine vintage, indeed. Then we're going to dry brush all of that extensively with Riser Rust. Build up a nice coat of rust on there. And then we're going to add in some... Verdigris effects, that's the bluey green stuff that happens when you know, metal's been stuck in the sea for too long uh, with Nihilac Oxide. Um, really awesome paint this one. Um, really thin, quite chalky, but um, really nice effect indeed. That should be all the paints that we need for the, for the metallics. Okay, so we've zoomed in here and we're going to get to work. Uh, I've grabbed my uh, trusty wash brush here. It says a wash brush, but uh, I use it for all sorts of things. It's just got a nice sizable head to it. So uh, we're, these areas are quite, some of these areas are quite large. So we're going to start um, start with the base colours. Um, we'll go for, yeah, we'll do the silver first. Why not? Got the lead belcher with a good shape. So I've just stuck it down with a bit of blue tack there. Just uh, keeps the paint pot nice and still. And, uh, moisten the brush here a little bit. So the silver. So we're going to do this on the uh, on the axe, uh, on the me, chain mail around here, uh, and these little rings. I'm thinking about picking them out now, um, but they are quite intricate, and I feel like maybe we're going to get some paint on those um, at later stages. So I might pick them out. I'm definitely going to do like the hook in here, and, uh, and these buckles down there, but uh, maybe these little ones in in the armour just there. Maybe we'll leave those till later. So we'll get started. We'll start with the axe now. Just load up a bit of the brush. Paints at quite a nice consistency at the moment. I do tend to 
water them down in the pot. Nice and carefully, of course. Right now. And maybe you're thinking, why are we sticking um why are we sticking some silver paint over a silver spray? Well, the spray has quite a different has a different finish. And if we need to touch up at any point, then you want the finish and the and the and the colour to be exactly the same. It's just good practice to To put your base colours on top of the top of the spray, I think. You see, it has a very slightly different tone to it, the silver. So it's just going to keep it nice and consistent over the cross of the model. But because it's a silver spray, I mean that is just the tiniest, tiniest coat there. And it's already done. So we won't need a second coat over that. And that's the beauty of using silver. So uh, that's the axe head, we're going to move on to this little bit of um, chain mail just tucked in there, being very careful with the armour, just poking a little bit in there, and on here, see there's a bit of blue on this uh, chain mail from where I got the, the armour colour on it, so because we're having to touch that up, it might be noticeable that you've used a slightly different silver. I mean, I guess it's not so much of a big deal with this kind of model because we are going to be slapping a load of corrosion and technical technical paints all over it. But it's good practice, you know, to do this. And the buckle, a little bit on there, a little bit on there. Just colour that. Hook in as well. And on the back horse. And that's it for the silver. Yep, so moving on. Balthazar Gold. That good shake. It's for all the ornate pieces or the decorative pieces of metal. Just got a um it's a brush head actually, one of the little plastic covers that you get with uh with your brushes. Just a spare one of those. I just stick that in there in the gap of the pot there, just to keep that open. Um, okay, so we're moving on. Put some of this on the brush. It's quite thick at the moment. Might add just a drop of water to that. That's better. Just a bit more flow to it. So, yeah. So we'll start with this bit up top. It's lovely. Lovely metal, looks like a garden fence type thing. Right, and then we're going to be really careful as we tuck that right where the armour is. Just going to gently work that in, very slowly. If you uh, if you do get it on the on the shoulder pad, I'd say maybe go back with a little bit of Incubi darkness, just to just to merge that back in. And we'll do the other side now. Just doing the tips first, right near the metal, right near the armor plate, and then I'm going to fill it in. And again, the silver base means that this brass has a lovely one coat, one smooth job, one one lovely coat, and it's done. And you can go a bit dark. You can do another coat if you want. That's good practice, but uh, I don't think it needs it. And we'll move on to the do this little plate here. Trio of metal plates. Just gently working that on. Just 
trying to be nice and neat around the armor. Power armor. Working around the top of the edge there. On the end underneath, poking a bit of that under there. That's that. Just drop a tiny bit more on there. Lovely. And there's one under here. Just under there. I'm trying to be careful of the hook. Got a bit of this bronze on the silver there. I wasn't paying attention, but that's okay. And we've got, I see the little fly on his uh, on his gauntlet there. You can see that. I'm just gonna make sure make sure I'm not overloading the brush. And just gently. Start dabbing that on. It's been nice and neat. Not to get it on the armor. On the power armor. It's got these little feet sticking out. And legs. Yeah, and like I said, if you do get a bit on the armor. Ah, you see, I've already I've got a bit of silver there from earlier, so I'll touch that up with a bit of Inky Bee Darkness, blend that back in. Well, that's no problem. Yeah, so you can see it was right about just on the edge here. Got a nice blob of silver on there, so we've just gone back over, coloured that in with a bit of Inky Bee Darkness, and once that's dry, I might put just a tiny bit of the Moot Green um, again from the just on the edge. And you'd never know that there was you'll never know that that was a mistake, but that's just a little tip. If you do get it on the armor, just go back, touch it up. no problem at all. All right, so the metallics are now nice and dry. I did actually go back over with the with the brass and just strengthen a few of these little bits and uh, and I also completely missed out the um the horn on his face there. Um, so I've gone back and done that. but these are all nice and dry now, so we're we're gonna move on. Uh, Agrax Earth Shade next. So we're going to do a good wash of that. Still using the same brush, the uh, sort of larger wash brush size here. Mid to medium large, I suppose. So just load up the brush with some of this. Don't be afraid to slap this all over it. The axe is quite a big surface, so I'm going to really give that a nice cover. Really let that sit in all the recesses. And spread that around. Work it around the other side. And because it's a large flat surface, you're gonna just be keep an extra eye on this as it's uh, as it's drying. Um, just in case you get any extra large extra large bubble pools so just want to keep an eye on those, mop them up a bit but yeah that's looking good there we are, nice and smooth and uh, let that dry Mm -hmm. I'll go around and do all the other silver bits first. And just poking it into the chain mail in there. And on the back. You can really sort of flood that and uh, really fill in all those gaps, and that will really help to define that sculpting work on the chain mail there. So just like in the episode one of this little video series, I've uh, got, um, got a little topic of discussion for today. Just something, uh, just gives me something to do. So to talk about 
share some thoughts on um, I don't know maybe you've got your own thoughts and ideas and it would be great to see some of those down in the comment section well uh, I don't really have anybody to talk to here except Dimu my little troll so uh, today's topic of discussion is going to be choosing a color scheme that's right how do you choose a color scheme? well it's a good question really um, when I pick an army and do a color scheme I like to do um, I like to do something individual I like to create something just going around and blobbing a bit of this on those buckles and things help define those yeah so when I'm choosing a scheme I like to do something a bit uh, individual um, come up with something of my own something I can create like the drowned plague uh, like for my admec a personal color scheme for them which is a uh, Forge Phobos, uh, grey cloaks with purple inlay, and I suppose when I'm picking a scheme, I like to think about um, a certain theme or a certain bit of fluff or something that could uh, be incorporated with it. So I'm just working my way around all these all these metal bits, Give a nice smooth layer of the uh, the Agrax making sure I'm working it into all those recess details working it in, really defining all that stuff uh, I'm a Space Wolves as well I haven't uh, revealed what they're gonna look like on my Instagram account yet or uh, what the army's called what their bit of theme or fluff surrounding them is but uh, I know what it is it's all in the works, um, just haven't revealed it yet. Coming soon. So when I was thinking of the, the Death Guard, I thought, oh, I do love the uh, the standard colour scheme, but I wanted to do something different. And I had a few ideas. It originally came from, started thinking of some names for the army first. And, uh, uh, I think the creeping bile was a the creeping bile. I think that was a, another option. I wanted to do a nice sick yellow sort of look, sort of like stomach acid and vomit. Nasty. Um, and I was I've obviously came up with the uh, the name the drowned plague. Quite liked the idea of painting dark deep dark blues and greens and doing lots of rust and I also uh, had some ideas for an autumnal theme as well like autumn the time where everything dies and decays and decomposes uh, lots of reds and browns and that would have been cool but um, I don't know I just was drawn to the drowned plague so I thought give that one a go I had a bash uh, trying to come up with some uh, some colours for the armour and uh, all sort of came together. Well, I definitely find that the most frustrating part of the hobby is getting those colours right originally. All the you know, paint models and strip them off again and try again. Uh, it's quite a faff. Right, so this is looking good. Blob a bit of that on those buckles there. There we go. Just going to check on the axe up here. We just smooth a little bit of that. On. Right, so I'm going to let that dry, and we'll come back. Right, so the washes are all lovely and dry now, and uh, it's looking pretty good. Uh, so we're going to move on here, we're going to pull out the magic pot, which is the Typhus Corrosion. Now, the trick for this is to use a nice, nasty old brush. So I've got a few here. 
Yeah, just a, an old brush or something uh, will do. This one is is a base coat brush. It looks looks all right, but it's starting to like split at the ends and things, and it's made its way into my uh, into my um, tacky brush pot. So I'll give that a shake. We'll open this up. Now this is gonna this paint will absolutely murder your brushes, so it is very important that you you don't use a brush that you intend to be using for nice things so, you'll, and you'll see as soon as you start sticking this on the brush is going to like it's going to start splitting apart you'll see and you can see it's already starting to go so we're going to get some of this on the brush it's a wonderful texture this so just play with it slap it all over the all over the axe blot it on if you like you can work up concentrated areas of it too if you like if you want to just by blobbing it on And it's entirely up to you how little or much you want to do with this. Just until you think it's alright. Entirely up to you. So that's looking pretty good. Why don't you just put a little bit more just underneath there. Just blot that under. Keep maybe... I've built it up a bit more around, uh, around the thicker areas and on the blade. And... Uh, on, the, on the sharp edge of the blade there is a little bit thinner so we can get a bit more definition out of that but yeah that's looking nice so we're going to work this around the rest of the model so yeah painting a choosing a color scheme is uh, it's fun it can be stressful <laughs> but, um, yeah so one piece of advice if you want to do something individual if you want to do something unique and something that's your own then I would suggest maybe thinking of some theme or a bit of fluff to go with the uh, to go with the, to go with the force and that might influence the um, might influence your choice of colors and, uh, I do like I do enjoy the idea of um, you know if you've got a favorite chapter um, maybe you love the uh, the blood angels and the idea of having a fully painted perfectly done blood angels army in front of you sounds very appealing with all the correct company markings and I definitely see the appeal in that, that sounds very cool and, uh, especially if there's a, a particular a particular uh, chapter or s sub chapter that you um, you admire. If I was doing Blood Angels, I'd probably go for the Flesh Terrors. Uh, so I'd definitely see the appeal in that. So that's an easy way to choose a choose a color scheme if you've got if you just have an absolute love for a certain chapter. So I'm gonna very carefully just just with the very tips of the brush poke a little bit of this onto that fly on this wrist and just being ever so careful because this paint will run quite quickly off the brush and it will get all over his gauntlet so I'm just going to drop just a tiny bit of that on here and maybe wipe off that bit that's just got there on the gauntlet there that's it and you can use the sort of flat edge of the brush, brush as well if you need a bit more Bit more control, just to just to jot some of that in there. Move on to the uh, the other bits here. And what I find is when I'm playing with colours, trying to find that perfect colour scheme, sometimes you're looking at it and it's almost there, but there's something just not quite right. And it's, sometimes it can be one of the sort of more what do you call it? Not one of the more prominent colours, but more one of the um, sub colours like the uh for example on my ad mech I had the the coat and the uh and the inlay of the coat the grey and the purple 
very nice indeed. And I had the trousers, which were black, and there's something I wasn't quite happy with the overall look of the model. I changed that black to Inkaby Darkness, which is more of a blue, and for some reason the blue just w seemed to work a bit nicer with the purple and the grey. It was that tiny little detail that uh, just really perfected the, uh, the colours for me. Um, so play around in different colours, play around with um, with the secondary colours, dry a colour wheel, have a little look into those. And, um, normally for me it's all about doing something unique, something with a bit of fluff, a bit of theme, a bit of story maybe. That's how I would choose. I'm just going to wipe a bit of that on these chains. I don't want to overload the chains because uh, you don't want to clog up too much detail. You want them to look still distinguishable. Well, we'll put some on. And uh, I might do a little bit on just these buckles sticking out here. Just wipe a bit on there. Wipe a bit on there. A little bit on that hook. But I wouldn't try and go mad with the uh, with the little details. Just a little bit is fine. Because they're so small, you're just trying to get this paint in there. It's just could be messy, and it's not like this is going to dry smooth either. So to paint over the top of. But I, that looks about it. Uh, and you really want to give this plenty of time to dry. It does dry reasonably quickly. I'm just going to drop. Bit more on there actually, but, uh, but yeah, you definitely don't want to be trying to paint over this while it's still wet. Yeah, I'm gonna just pile a little bit more on there, I think. A nice, nice bit of texture, into it. nice and thick up there as well. You just build it up in the areas that you like and be quite dynamic with it. Entirely up to you. Put a little bit more on this shoulder piece there. Cool. And you're not completely smothering it because you it's quite um they are quite covered at the moment, but uh you can see still bits of the, the gold and the silver coming through. And and we can go back over with those paints again once this is dry. If you feel like you've done a bit too much of this, you can add a bit of that colour in and it will blend it in nicely and it will look pretty good. So we'll let that dry. While that is drying, I just thought I'd point out that this paint, uh, I tend to have two, two pots of water on the go. One for normal paints and I have a, another pot which is uh, more for... More for texture paints, ones that are going to come out nice and crispy and lumpy. Um, I tend to keep that water separate to the um, to the normal water that I'm using. I think I've had it before where I start trying to clean brushes with um, with water that's got some of this like corrosion in it, and you get bits in your brush, and it's not nice. So I just just a little tip: I'd keep that water separate. There we are, so the uh, typhus corrosion is all nice and dry now, and you can just see how lovely and uh, crispy and uh, textured, crusty that has made it. It's really nice indeed, it's really cool, really cool. Um, uh, it has made the metallics very dark, very brown at the moment, so which is fine, but what we're going to do is we want to just bring a little bit of that uh, metallic colour back uh, with just a few highlights before we move on to... Uh, before we move on to introducing the rust. Uh, so we're going to do that now. Yeah, so I've opened up the lead belcher again. Uh, just going to put not not loads of this on the brush, just, uh, just a bit. I'll show you on the axe. Let oh, me drop the brush there. <laughs> show you on the axe. We're going to just pick out maybe some of the edges. Not the whole thing, just bits. Little chips and bits. And you're right on the on the edge there. Maybe a little bit around there. A little bit under here maybe. 
just very lightly. I don't want loads of this. I'm just going to bring a bit of that colour back. Make it a bit more distinguishable. Just uh, gently just jotting a bit of this on there. Yeah, I might do a slightly bigger area uncovered like so. And maybe a few bits around here. Be on the corner there, It'll be on the corner there, just as a bit of a highlight. And there as well. Yeah, that's the general idea. I wouldn't go mad with this, uh, just a bit. And once uh, it might look quite shiny, quite bright at first, once that's dry, that'll blend in quite nicely. And, uh, and if, it, if it's still too dry, too, too bright, you can always put a bit of more Ag Agrax Earth Shade on there just to blend that back in. But, um, once we've got the uh, the rust on there as well, it should look pretty nice. So I'm gonna go around. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring out the Balthazar gold. And I'm gonna do this again, just picking and choosing little bits to do on the rest of the armor or the ornate bits. And while we've got the silver here, we can just do a tiny little bit, just a general, just little gentle strokes on the uh, on the chainmail. Maybe just on the one edge. Just introduce a little bit of that shininess back to it. While still keeping the corroded feel. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to go around and do that now. Alright, so I've gone around and I've uh, reintroduced a bit of that metallic colour back to it. Um, just really pick and choose where you want to do. Um, I won't go overboard with it. Um, I went a bit... I felt like I went a bit too much on the on the axe, the silver on the axe at the top there. So what I've done, I've just gone back, put a little bit more Agrax Earth Shade on it, and uh, darkened that back down, just blend it back together. Um, but the uh, the sort of sharper edges where I have gone for silver, or um, up here, where I've gone for where I've reintroduced a bit of the brass, I've left those nice and bright, just on the points where you feel like the light might catch. Um, it just adds another little level. Um, layer of dynamic to the to the model. So the next step is going to be uh, we're going to start introducing the rust. Okay, so we've got some uh, riser rust here, and we've pulled out a uh, small dry brush. So let's get this open. Dry brushing technique again. So we're going to need some tissue. load a bit of that on the brush and then work that into the bristles by scrubbing it into the tissue sounds obvious but it's a dry brush technique which means that your brush needs to be dry any wetness will um, you'll notice it will create streaks when you try and apply it to the model so your brush needs to be pretty much entirely dry and you've just got the sort of dry pigment left on the bristles there. It's a fantastic colour this and uh, orange is my favourite colour so that's probably one of the reasons why I chose this colour scheme. So we're gonna carefully uh, a bit at a time apply this colour to the areas. We'll start with the axe. Um, remember you can always add more Build it up slowly. And as soon as you start putting it on, just be just be wary of it. Just think to yourself, is it coming out too too quickly? Too wet? And if it is, then just work it back into the bristles. Work it into the brush. Dry that brush out. And get back to it. Little bits of tissue stuck there. Yeah, I'm just gonna start scrubbing this on. And this is really where this whole process comes alive. Start adding the uh, adding the rust over the top of that corrosion. It looks great. So 
So I'm just slowly building that up. Just take your time. Be on the edge. Like I said, do as, as much or as little of this as you like. I'll wait around the other side for a bit. I'm sort of focusing on certain areas, so where the rust, where the corrosion was stronger, it was thicker, where we applied more of the texture paint. I'm gonna work on that area a bit more, build up a stronger hue of, of orange there. Maybe just smooth a bit of that out. Smooth a bit of that out. It's quite um, there is quite a heavy concentration of this rust on there, but. Um, so again, you can always go back, add a little bit of silver, just to pick out some bits again. If you feel like it's a bit too, too dull, too, too much brown, too much orange going on. So I think that's quite nice at the moment. But yeah, I think on the edge here, I might go back and do just a little bit of silver. But we can carry on working our way around the model here. But um. So yeah, today's topic of discussion, choosing a colour scheme, that's pretty much all I have to say really on the on the matter. It's uh like I said, if you can incorporate a theme, name or some fluff into the uh, idea that might help you decide what colours you want to use. Um example the drowned plague, I liked the sound of the name. Uh, made me think of the Deep sea, I thought. Blues and greens sound quite nice. And I suppose it's also what colour do you feel like you would enjoy painting as well. Uh, some colours are harder than others. Um, yellows and whites, for example. Uh, maybe you love the white scars, but uh, maybe you're not so big on the idea of painting white. Maybe you love the crimson, uh, the imperial fists, but maybe you don't fancy painting all that yellow. So maybe you choose a, uh, you know, successor chapter instead. Uh, coming up with some fluff for your own story. I don't know. Maybe uh, it's entirely up to you, really. But uh, maybe your army. They really come from a certain place that shapes the way they, they do battle or the way they look or perhaps they have a certain mission in mind or perhaps they have a special job hunting orcs maybe I'm just scrubbing this on there we're almost done here, and I'm going to just be really careful, I'm going to use the the sort of narrower edge of the brush like so to get this fly on his wrist trying to not get that on the armour there you go All right. so I'm going to carry on with this, uh, I'm going to do these uh, do this chain mail, pick out some of these buckles, and then we'll come back. Right, so we're making good progress with this. Um, almost done. Gone around and done the chain mail on the back here as well now. And I've uh, just done a, a stronger, stronger concentration of the uh, on the rust just near the bottom there. Works quite nicely. So a gentle coat of it over the top of all the chains there. Being careful to avoid the um, all the armor we've already done here, and then just brightening it up on the tips there adds a bit of a highlight. Just helps to lift the whole thing up a bit. Very nice. 
So that's the dry brush done. We're gonna might go around and just do a little bit of that highlighting again once this is dry, maybe. Uh, you know, with the metallics, metallic paints, just bring those out just to make sure that I'm nice and happy with all of this. For example, like these little crooks in the uh, in the axe, I might put just a little bit in there. So where he's been smacking things with it, maybe some of the rust is chipped off. But yeah, it's looking nice. It's looking nice. Oh, and I'm I'm also concentrating around the um, around the detail areas as well. If you make it a bit brighter there, that'll help to lift up those those craters and all those recessed details. But yeah, it's looking nice. We're not far off now. All right, so we're very almost there with the armor now. I've uh, just gone a uh, Got a little layer brush here, a little detail brush. Just gone round, picked out some of those bits of metal, like I said again. So just round the axe. Uh, just on the very edges there, you can see just a tiny bit of shine to them. And on the tip where he's been hitting things with it. And on the chains here, just on, just on the left side of the chains. Just a little, nice little layer of silver there as well. Just having very little on the brush and just gently touching that in there. That's going to just give those a bit of a highlight as well. You can see just a little bit of shine in there. Well, it still keeps that dirty, nasty, corroded effect, but uh, it just helps to make some of those features come to life a bit more. So we're coming to the final stages now. That's um, You could very much leave it there if you wanted to, but... Um, but this is the drowned plague, and uh, so for me, I need a need a little bit of deep sea goodness in there. So we're going to add some verdigris. I just feel like this is another another really nice little point of interest to add to your model as well. Uh, if you start having loads of all these really rusted, corroded metallics, it can be a bit a bit overbearing, a bit cumbersome. So I'm going to add a little bit of this in there just to spice things up, make it a little bit more interesting. It's really lovely paint this. It's it's like it's almost as thin as water. It's quite chalky. So you just put a little bit of this on the brush. Just poke it where you want it to go and let it run into those details. So a good one for you. This nice crater on the axe there. It just just floods off of the brush. So we're gonna put a bit of that in there. And this sort of stuff will build up in all the little gaps. All those crits and craters. That's where this that's where the verdigris would sit. So I'm just gonna flood most of those. Not over not not gonna go overboard. A little bit too much there. Just wipe that off. But all those details, like little craters. Yeah. Drop a bit of this in there, and on this big, big hole at the top here, put some in there. Just have it maybe start to work its way out. Just blend that in, smooth that in. Put some in the hole there, and on these uh, chips and underneath bits there, a little bit there. Again, it's about finding a balance. I won't go overboard with this, but it's entirely subjective. Do as little or as much as you like. Just poking a bit in there, and maybe just gently trickling it out, and letting it run out where it's growing and spreading. You need very little of this on there uh, to actually to get a good result as well. Um, this one pot is it, it looks basically full. I've done an entire Death Guard army with it. <laughs> cool. So I'm going to work that round the rest of the model. Do all these little bits. Kind of focusing on uh, where there's joins. 
bolts are. All those little bits. That's where this stuff would build up. A little bit around the base there. Not too much. I want to get that on the armor. If you're not familiar with what Verdigree is, just have a little have a little look online, look at some pictures. See how it looks. But uh But these chains, so we this is nice because we can uh run a bit of that down the length of the chain of some of these chains. It looks like it's right in the gaps and it's trickling down. That's very nice. A little bit more. A little bit there, a little bit there. Just see how that adds just a nice little extra point of interest to it. Nice little colour. Lovely. Yeah, so I'm just gonna check around, make sure I'm happy with this. You know, like I said, do as much or as little as you please. Well, I think we're almost there. There we have it then, so that's the Nylac Oxide, nice and dry, and I zoom in here, give you a good close-up, see, see what we've done. See all that lovely verdigree effect in there. I'm quite pleased. Looking really nice, I think. So we uh, based the metallics, all the weapons, chain mail and uh, buckles with a lead belt here. Then all the ornate pieces of metallic like on his armor and these plates on the chest there and uh, the emblem on his wrist base those with balthazar gold it gave everything a good wash of agrax earth shade and then i did the typhus corrosion build up that nice texture picked out a few highlights again blended them in with a bit of agrax earth shade if need be then rise of rust for that lovely dry brush, build up all that rust. And then a few more highlights and a bit of Nihilac Oxide to add some lovely verdigree effects. And that is how you do the metallics, the corroded, rusted metallics for the Drowned Plague. There we have it then, so that's episode two in uh, the Painting the Drowned Plague, where um, this episode we looked at the corroded rusted metallics uh, we've already done the power armor and next episode we're going to be focusing in on how to paint the drowned flesh the pox and all those juicy bits um, so i hope you'll join me for that we're going to be having a little bit more chat as well i'm going to be talking about learning to paint i hope you've enjoyed the video today if you have then a, a like and a comment would be very very much appreciated and if you'd like to see more of what goes on here inside the frozen fortress then uh, Perhaps you'll also consider becoming a subscriber. Once again, whoever you are, thank you very, very much for joining me today. I'm Winter Wizard, that's Dimu, and for now, keep it frosty. <laughs>